Okay, so I was trying to make it sound it. cool. Yeah. The next, uh, you know, the next master jazz flautist right here. This is Melissa Cephalou, <laughs> a, attorney at law. But those, Secretly. Those, those days are dwindling here because, you know, in, in a few months, she's going to start doing concerts as a, as a yes, jazz flautist. And, and I think she's going to quit her day job. And, uh, you know, the rest is going to be history. Hey, guys, I hope you're all having a great start to your new year so far. So for those of you already subscribed, you guys already know, I'm a touring saxophonist who normally spends most of my time out on the road, uh, either as a soloist with my own quartet or a lot of times playing with Chris Bode's band. And I also spent some of my younger days playing with pop icons like Taylor Swift. However, these days I've been at home making content for you guys with the Jazz Lesson Videos team and also practicing at my apartment in Queens. And so this has resulted in my girlfriend hearing me practice a lot over this past year. Now, Melissa here is a divorce and family law attorney, but she did play flute in high school. Now, it's been almost 15 years since she's played it, but with all the time that she's heard me practicing around the apartment, who knows, maybe we can pull off the impossible here and teach Melissa jazz improvisation in about 15 minutes. So before we jump in, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And also feel free to check out the PDF downloads that I'll be using here with Melissa today. These are all available at jazzlessonvideos.com and it's part of a New Year starter pack that we've set up on the website. The contents of this combo package essentially combine a bunch of different PDF packages that I've created with the Jazz Lesson Videos team and this content has a really good range of stuff to get you started on some really great fundamentals for improvisation. It also goes beyond that for players that are more advanced. It really covers territory that is valuable, whether you're a beginning improviser or even a professional player. There's a lot of content in this combination of materials that I myself still spend time practicing today. So if you do want to get the download, there is a coupon that you can use. Coupon New Year 20 will get you $20 off at checkout. So without further ado, let's check out what we're able to accomplish just working together for 15, 20 minutes. And I'll actually show you some recommendations for how to go beyond what I did here with Melissa today, just in case you want to spend a little bit more time than just 15 minutes in a single day dedicating yourself to your skills as an improviser. And I do want to give a quick shout out to Jazz Lesson Videos manager Austin Krucek, who did all the video editing for this video today, as well as all the content that I've been putting out. So I hope you enjoy this one. All right, so the first thing you want to learn is that yeah. we're going to start with an F dominant seven chord. So that's going to be F, A, C, E flat. What does a dominant seven <clears throat> chord mean? <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> so essentially here I just have Melissa arpeggiate each chord on a blues. So in other words, she's playing the chord tones to each chord that makes up a simple blues form. The first thing that you want to do on any song that you learn, no matter what level you're at, is arpeggiate each chord. And that's a big part of the standard analysis PDF in the starter pack. So when we do the most basic form of a blues, it's all just made up of three dominant chords, which is just a type of chord quality. And so Melissa's going to learn how to arpeggiate those three dominant chords now. Yeah, that's it, exactly. And then you'll, you'll hear you do that four times. Okay. You'll do it four times a time. I can so, play. Yeah. One, I'm sorry. Two, and three, and four. Does it sound good? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah it sounds great. <laughs> Coming from you, that means a lot. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. And then back to F7. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Now you've done everything except for on this one measure, we're going to play C7. So right, the last my arm line, is getting, <laughs> my arm is getting tired. Right. So the last line Not used this. to holding anything anymore this high. <laughs> <laughs> So we're going to start improvising. You right. can use this as a reference. See how it's changing the order of the notes, but the notes in each bar are the same? Yes. Yeah. So you can do it like that if you want, like it would sound like this. essentially like improvising step one. So mixing up arpeggio shapes is a great way to start improvising and it's a really important thing to practice even for advanced improvisers. Essentially you just mix up the order of notes in the arpeggio. Instead of playing the chord tones straight up from the root, you just mix up the shape by changing the order of the notes. This exercise technique is one of the exercises demonstrated in the PDF tune learning exercises on 20 standard chord progressions, which is another ebook in the starter pack. Once you get the hang of that technique, you can really start improvising on your own, just using the chord tones of each chord, and then you mix up the rhythm as you see fit. And so essentially I do a quick overview of that idea with Melissa and then I play an example to demonstrate before having her give it a try herself. And I have not practiced in over 15 years, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we're gonna see, well, see we how well this Just goes. Just have fun with it. Okay. Yep, yep. Yep, exactly. Yep. Yeah, exactly. 
exactly. That's probably the worst yeah. playing ever. No, you made so much I was much trying to make it sound. You made so much improvement. Like, you literally just started to improvise there. And yes. we've been doing this for what? Like, 20 minutes? I don't know. <laughs> it's the camera yeah. roll. Okay, so that was really fun, but where do we go from there? So, if I were to keep on working with Melissa beyond the 15 minutes that we did in a single day, the next step that I would do to go beyond just improvising with the arpeggio notes would be improvising with the full chord scales or the scales that match with every chord. So essentially every chord has a scale base that a chordal instrument uses as their basis to voice the chord. That's just a fancy way of saying the pianist or guitarist won't just use the chord tones, they'll also throw in other notes which typically just come from the scale that pairs with a chord. Like on an F7, they'll actually build the chord with not only the F, A, C, and E flat, but they'll also quite possibly throw in a G and a D. And then all of those notes would come from the Mixolydian scale, which pairs with a dominant chord. The Mixolydian scale is also called a dominant scale for that reason. For a definitive source on all the scales that match with any chord you'll ever see when you're improvising in jazz, with a master index written in all 12 keys, plus a bunch of scale exercises, you can find that in the New Year Starter Pack within the PDF titled Scales for Jazz Improvisation. Now with a blues, we could shortcut this process and just use a blues scale all the way through, which does sound okay, but the reality is playing bluesy doesn't just come from playing a blues scale. And there's a lot of harmony happening in a blues that isn't actually outlined in the blues scale. For instance, I could play really bluesy right here, improvising with a lick that actually uses all 12 notes in the Western tonal system. So I'll play a little blues lick off the top of my head, and it's going to use every note in the chromatic scale, not just the notes in a blues scale. <laughs> So this is all to say, to pursue fully mastering harmony, I would really recommend, you know, not shortcutting the process and understanding how each chord has a given scale or sometimes a couple scale options that really pair with that chord to really fully embellish that harmony. So if we were to just improvise with the scale notes of every chord that we're improvising, we could go chord by chord and just play random scale notes that match with that chord all the way through. But if we do that randomly, it will sound a little random. So the key piece that makes improvising with scale notes sound really melodic is actually the idea of voice leading. Voice leading is just a smooth transition from chord to chord. And that's usually accomplished by stepwise motion or melodic motion that operates within a small intervallic range. Chords typically change at the beginning of the measure or sometimes on beat three. So a great way to develop the skill of smooth voice leading into a chord is to plan out the actual voice leading part and then just fill in the notes in between. So that technique is also something provided for you in this New Year's Starter Pack download. That's part of the PDF called Voice Leading Workbook, which has exercises like this throughout a bunch of different standard chord progressions. So for this exercise, you can just fill in the notes where there's blank space in each measure using notes from the matching chords scale. With that technique, you could solo through a whole form diatonically and make it sound really melodic. Essentially, on a simple blues form like what I was doing with Melissa, if I were to only play the scale notes on every chord and focus on nice voice leading from measure to measure, that would sound something like this. <laughs>
So now that we've gotten the idea of soloing with just the chord tones or with the arpeggio notes and also the scales that match with each chord, now let's go beyond that and actually throw in a planned out phrase or lick if you'd like to call it. Now, of course, ultimately when you improvise, you don't want to plan anything because that wouldn't be improvising. But learning jazz is like learning a language. It essentially is a language. So just like you have to practice saying planned out phrases in a new language that you're learning, you have to do that same thing with jazz until you become fluent and you can just say whatever you want to say in that language instantaneously in the moment as you're playing. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna throw in a planned phrase when we get to the fifth measure of this blues form. So I'll improvise using the scale tones on every measure, but I'll play this phrase on measure five, which will add another element to how we're improvising here. So this phrase is from a PDF package download on approach note and enclosure phrase workouts. That download has phrases using the concept of chromatic approach notes and enclosures, which just essentially go beyond just playing the scale notes by adding melodic chromatic notes that go in between those notes. So now I'm gonna play an example where I'm just gonna use the scale tones and the chord tones all the way through, except for bar five, when I'm gonna insert a planned phrase. <laughs> This is the step that I find a lot of developing improvisers don't get to. And it's a really important step to start being able to add melodic chromaticism in between the scale notes. So it's gonna be something that's very beneficial to start working into your improvising. And that's why the starter pack that we created actually has three eBooks all focusing on this concept of chromatic approach notes and enclosures. One that focuses on the technical mechanical aspect of the concept. One that focuses on the phrases over different chord changes like what we just saw. And one that actually focuses on playing etudes through full standard chord form. So essentially full standard tunes. So to wrap up here, we'll now do a more advanced version of a blues using jazzier chord changes here. So what I mean by that is these chord changes are how we typically play a blues as jazz musicians. And the main thing added here is a bunch of different 2-5-1 chord progressions. 2-5-1s are really the harmonic backbone of jazz. It is the most common chord progression that you will see in jazz standard song forms. And so for that reason, I made a full ebook on this concept, which is also in that starters pack. So now I'll go ahead and improvise all the way through the form here using everything we talked about today. But in measure nine and 10, I'm going to play a two, five, one lick verbatim, taking one of the phrases from the major two, five, one phrases PDF package. This will give you an idea of some full on improvising techniques here. So let's just check out what that sounds like. So that's a pretty thorough overview of how I would go about the process of learning jazz improvisation. And we did start at the beginning, but we actually got pretty deep into some really great fundamentals. And a lot of the things that we covered are actually things that I'm still practicing today, just in more advanced ways. It is a misconception that advanced players should always be just practicing really advanced concepts. 
the reality is that a lot of times the most important thing for advanced players to practice is really the fundamentals. So if you were somebody watching this that's a little bit further along in your jazz improvisation skills, make sure that you consider going back to these really important fundamentals. So make sure to download that starter pack if you haven't already. There's gonna be a lot of great resources in there for getting you started if you're just a beginner or even just fine tuning your skills and taking things to the next level if you're a professional player. All right, so we got through a lot of information here today, but just think about how much Melissa accomplished in 15 minutes and just imagine what you could do if you practice like that for a few days or weeks or even years. Getting good at improvising is really as simple as putting some time into learning this language. And I hope you'll find the resources that we talked about today to be useful and fun. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, make sure to do so and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks so much for watching.